Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Learnings. Today we are going to learn about how to document your APIs using one of the most popular frameworks called Swagger. Just like the development of APIs is important, in the similar way the documentation of APIs is also important. Why? Because the documentation is going to be the face of your APIs to external world. That's why it's important to have a simple, neat and clean, easy to understand documentation. And that is where Swagger helps us. I have created a sample Spring Web MVC project here and we are going to implement Swagger inside it today. Let me first take you through the application. It's customer controller class having one method, add customer. Uh, return type is string. We are returning home so that we can redirect to our home.jsp view. Alright, we have customer class having one property called name. Then let's move on to form.xml and add the dependencies of Swagger. I have here in notepad the dependencies in order to save our time. Okay, let's add the dependencies. I'm using Spring version 4.3.6. It's Spring Fox Swagger 2 dependency. I'm using 2.6.1, then one dependency of Swagger UI, and there is one more which we need is the Jackson data bind dependency. Alright, so we are done with the first step. Now move on to second step. Add the Swagger 2 documentation configuration the definition in your servlet context or application context whatever you have in your application so i am adding it here let's do a save and let's try to start our server and see does it make any difference by performing these two steps if you see the request mappings here uh, it is slash customer slash add okay this is our api then slash v2 slash api docs then there are few more as well regarding swagger so you see there is something which is slash v2 slash api docs let's try to open this url and see what it actually contains it is containing a json let's try to open this json in a json editor control c and paste it and c swagger 2.0 info description is api documentation swagger has created the api documentation just by performing two steps add your dependencies to perm and then define a bean definition your swagger to configuration class right so swagger has created the documentation for us for customer controller description is customer what are the paths slash customer slash add summary add customer responses 200 401 is unauthorized 403 forbidden so swagger has created the documentation for us it presents us a json view not only this swagger also provides a ui to view this json for that let's move on to third step Add this default servlet handler to our uh, your servlet context so that Spring redirects our request to default servlet. It is able to find our servlet. Okay, so we are done with the third step as well. Let me try to stop start the server again. It's started. Let's go back. Localhost slash ADD swagger UI dot HTML. See, this is the view which Swagger itself is providing to us. And how clean is this? Customer controller get API slash customer slash add. Add the customer. Then if you click over here, it expands. What are the response content types? Since we have not defined any response content type so it's showing a star then your 401 403 404 all right so this is 
a simple easy to understand documentation of your APIs. Let's move on. Now so far we have seen that we have not added any annotations to our project. So Swagger provides us a number of annotations. The more about the theoretical part of Swagger you can refer to my blog post. So let's try to understand these important annotations which Swagger is providing to us one by one. One is your slab, your at the rate API. So you know to save the time again I have just copied it and let's try to add it. Now where to add at the rate API annotation? It is to be added to your class at the class level. So what it is uh, saying that description is equal to uh, this is a sample swagger controller. So the description attribute is right now uh, deprecated. The one which is now available is tags. So we should prefer using tags. Although description will also work. Let's see what difference does it make okay our project will be reloaded fine now this is a sample swagger controller and this is customer controller so it is more easier to understand now let's move on to the second annotation api operation okay let's add it to here what does this uh, api what is the operation that it performs so i say it adds a new customer so we add it to the method. Let's do a control S. Let the project reload. Uh, meanwhile, we are, we can, what we can do? We can copy this so that we save time. Alright, so API operation. First, here. It's showing add customer as description as we have added the description. So it shows as a new customer here. Fine. Now the third annotation is API param. So it is definitely going to be regarding your parameters that your API. Right now it's not accepting any parameter. So let me add a request parameter. Let's say request param string name so my api right now is accepting one request parameter so api param can be used to annotate your uh, parameters to the api all right it can be a query parameter or it can be taken through a path variable as well so what does this say name of the customer okay name represents name of customer and required equal to true that means it's mandatory okay so let's get the server reloaded okay so it's reloaded now Let's try to refresh. So we have now parameters into our API. The parameter name is name. It is required field. Name of the customer. It's a query parameter. Data type is string. Not only this, you can actually hit this. Try it out. You can actually try to click this button and see what is the response response body welcome to swagger so you can actually make a request using the swagger documentation to your server and see what is the response which the api is going to produce with this input this is extremely extremely beneficial now the next annotation is api responses again you can add it here to annotate what are the responses that your method can produce. I have added here two. You can add more as well. 501 customer could not be added. 
okay response is customer dot class right now our response is not that so we can eliminate this you are not authorized for not one okay save let's get the project preloaded meanwhile we can have a look here 401 unauthorized 403 404 it is by default showing us these three facility responses so our project is loaded let's try to reload the page 401 you are not authorized customer could not be added so a better way a better message you can add similarly more responses to your APIs. So add the rate responses and API response annotation is done. Then moving further, we have add the rate API model annotation. Now it's basically an annotation that you apply to your model class. Now since we are not returning here any model, let's try to return here a customer class object. signify here in your responses what will be the response so you can have uh, different uh, you can specify here different responses depending upon your uh, uh, HTTP status okay now let's see what difference does it make if we add a response which is containing a model class object Right, so it's getting reloaded. We are done. Let's try to refresh. So, our API is right now its response class is a model schema, and the name is containing one property. And the property name is uh, property name is name itself. All right, so this is how it is going to present us. If we see here, let's have a look at this as well. The definitions part, it is containing customer which is of type object and having properties. Here one property name, the type of which is string. So even though we have not annotated our uh, customer class with any annotation, Swagger is still picking this class. Now coming to API model annotation, so you can add this annotation at your class. Okay, so it will basically you can provide the description, and there are multiple other attributes which you can study yourself. So API model, and let's try to understand this API model property annotation as well. So of course since it says model property so it is going to be at the level of your properties data type of uh, this property is string which it is saying and value is name of the customer so it's kind of description that you are giving to this property so that it makes it easy to understand to the other person so our project is loaded again let's try to refresh it and uh, yeah so its name is spring so we are not seeing any difference let's uh, yeah difference here you can see because uh, does it show a difference here no it doesn't let's try to refresh it and let's see what is the json definitions we have description name of the customer all right so this is what we have provided the type is string data type that we have mentioned so not only to the external person not only to the other guy it's easy now to understand your apis but also to another developer who is let's say joining your team right if he sees these annotations okay 
what are these APIs? What is this API actually doing? What are the kind of responses it can produce? So it becomes very easy to understand for him or her as well, right? So I guess we are done with the annotations, right? So this was about the demo of your uh, Swagger documentation in our sample Spring Web MVC project. Uh, like I mentioned, to know more about it in terms of theory, please refer to my blog and uh, I hope you understood the concepts and you will now be able to add Swagger in your projects as well. Thanks for watching this video. Please do like, comment, uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, wish you all the best. See you next time. Have a good time. Bye-bye.